Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to write an autonomous for Pedro Pathing. So as you may know, I have a tank drive which I um, implemented Pedro Pathing on, but it does not have uh, some functionality such as strafing. So today we're going to be using Virtual Robot. So I firstly created a Java class auto test with my package and imports. I have named it as autonomous with um, test auto as my name for my driver station and grouped it in example so it's easier to find. Extends op mode means it can use all properties of op mode. Then I have um, initialized and declared some variables here such as path state. So a pedro passing is mostly based off of poses and um, writing paths between those poses. So in pedro passing, it goes off of an x, y coordinate plane so zero zero on pe uh, for pedro pathing is at the very corner here the edge of the field increasing my x will move it more towards the right such as 20 or 100. same with y a lower y would mean it, it's more towards the bottom here it's 20 and a greater y would move it more towards the top Then you can also make headings over here. In those headings, you must define um, what degree you want the robot to be facing. So there's two, uh, three types of headings. There's constant, linear, and tangent. Constant means uh, is basically mostly for strafing, such as if my path is somewhere over here and, my, and I want my robot to face 90 degrees the whole time, which is upward. Um, then I would do constant heading and it will strafe like that, keeping the same heading the whole time. Tangent to he heading, tangent heading, whatever, um, basically it will make sure that your uh, it will adjust its heading and make sure that the robot is facing forward the whole time. So on this, the robot here is facing forward. This is the forward. So it would make sure that it's facing forward the whole time. Linear heading means that you can define what way you want the robot to be facing, such as if I want it to start facing zero, which is forwards over here, or well, right, and if I want it to turn upwards to 90, then I would do linear. And this is basically when you want your robot to rotate. Um, so on this, it's it goes by jumps of 90, obviously. So zero is facing this way. Zero is here right, right facing or forward facing is zero. Then 90, it would on this would face upwards like this. Over here. 270, it would be facing, well, let me just show this. So zero is forwards, 90 is upwards. So it would turn more to the left. 180 would turn even more to the left, fully facing left. 270 would be facing downwards. And 360 is zero again, so he would be facing right or forwards. Um, so before I explain my poses and pa uh, past states here, I'm going to show you exactly what this autonomous does. robot here so I'm using mechanism bot in this and show path so what we'll firstly do is assuming there's a arm at the front here and an arm on the left side here one for like claw and intake, I'm not sure. So it will go forward and score a specimen. We'll go and it will push one, go back, strafe. My tuning must be a little bit off for transitional. It's a little crude, but go again and strafe and push. It was a little, um, my starting was a little bit off, but, and assuming there's a left side here too it will go take a specimen it would score so this is basically what 
um, this autonomous that I'm about to show you does. So I have specified what my start pose is. I'm starting at 9,72 basically on this facing forwards. And I have some other poses here defined as well, such as first spec, push, and, you know, taking spec, and scoring. Okay, so in pendulum pathing, there's basically two things you can use to um, make your paths. Path chain and path. Path is basically for a um, movement from one point to another. So if I'm only moving from start pose to first spec, then I might use a path. Path chain is if you want to link multiple um, points onto one. If I was going from first spec to, to this point to first push set to another point, I can add multiple paths in a path chain. Now, even though most of my path chain is from one point to another, path chain is just better to use because in case you want to go later on to edit your code. So I have mostly just made path chains here. And these are basically the names. So you have to declare if it's a path or a path chain. And I have declared function names basically up here. Then I am building paths. So I'm setting, this is basically like function. So you're setting your function name to this function. So when you're making this, you must do follow like path builder. And then you must add a path. And you must specify if it's a line or a curve. In lines, you're basically just going from one point to another. So it will go from point start pose to first spec. And sorry, I messed a little bit up. So um, path chains, you can add multiple paths. So if I have one here, I can add another path. Stupid curve here. And I can just do um, more points and I can do that. I th that's what I think. I haven't really used path chains, but if I'm wrong, then you can let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure, based on what I have experimented with, that that's what path chains are. Now, um, I'm going from start pose here to first spec, and that's one point, so I have declared points. In lens, there's basically just two points, so you say your starting point to the point you want to go to. Then you set your heading to uh, what, I, uh, what it said before, tangent will always be facing forwards, so I have used tangent for most of my path chains. And a uh, dot build finalizes your path or path chain, so you must add that. Now, for curves, it's different. You must have at, uh, at least three or more points. So you must state your first point to where you're starting off and to what point you want to go to. But you must also give a third uh, central control point. So if I'm going from here to here, let me just show you <laughs> this is better. Okay. So control point. So if I'm going from here to here, I can change my control point to uh, show what type of curve I want. To make a larger curve or to make a smaller one. Like so. So you must add at least one control point. And then I have set my heading and build again. And these are mostly tangent. Now, um, as you might have seen, let me run it again. I'll show you the exact spot where my robot will go in reverse. So setting it up. Okay, it's not perfect, but you know, okay. So right now it's going in a line and then I have my curve and then there's another line. So now when I do reverse, it makes my robot go backwards as seen over here. So this will make sure that it goes in reverse and it won't change its heading. So I have my um, line over here. So I'm, going, I'm saying that go from this point to this one, but do it backwards, don't turn. You can also state like um, headings over here. You can set a constant heading and you can go into specifics like that. But I just wanted to go backwards, so I have just put reversed. And you must, it's a Boolean or a Boolean. So you must uh, set it true or false and you don't need to add it if it's false. Linear heading. 
is when you want to maintain a certain heading. So when I was strafing from the side, um, I wanted my heading to remain the same. Um, I can also do constant heading, like if I was to do This is the same thing as my linear heading was what I'd done. Um, so one thing to note is um, when I was testing before, I hadn't put the math to radians over here. And that was causing problems or issues. Or like, it was making my pass be a little, it was making my pass like go like wrong and like my heading was, it was turning. So I would always like recommend putting the math to radians over here such that it's easier for the robot like is it use its radiance to know what heading it's going to now after you have made ma uh, after you make all your paths and path chains um you need to create your path like you need to state that follow this path in this order so you have pa autonomous path update and you're using path state so this is you can basically use like conditionals too i guess but it uses cases which is like conditional S so um if you have case, if so, if I'm stating that you started off a case state, a uh, case state, path state zero, and that's down below that I'm starting at that path state zero, and then if the case is zero, then follower that fo then it, then the follower it follows path spec one, and then it sets sets the path state to pa um, path state one, and then I'm stating that if it's not if the follower is not busy such that um, meaning that if if it is not busy, meaning it's not moving, and it's completed this whole path, 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 ugh, path, then then go go on to the next one. And I'm doing that, and I'm running all my paths. Now for this, um, in Ritual Robot, uh, I can I'll look into it, but um, for this, you can also add arm and claw moments, like for specimen. In these cases. Or you can directly put them, I think, I'm not exactly sure, but in your um, paths when you're declaring them. So, I'm declaring start pose, and I'm initializing everything. And then down below, as I said, when it starts, it sets the path state to zero. If you don't do this, then your code might not run, and it might not do anything. But this is basically if it for Federal Passing Autonomous. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But other than that, thank you and keep watching. Thank you.